Hello everybody, Todd here with All Things Archery and Shooting, and I've got another vintage bow review for you. I believe what I have in this box is a Bear Kodiak Magnum. That is the 52 inch short bow in uh, the green color wood. Let's take a look at the box take a look at it. If it's what I think it is, this is the, this is the one I bought for $200 off eBay. And it's like brand new. I think all things ever been shot. Let's take a look at it. Let's get this thing opened up. It's definitely boxed up really good. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yep, there it is. Don't think anything else in here. Oop. Okay. Let's get it opened up to this like. Okay, there's a soft case. I'm not sure it's the original soft case or not, but it looks like it. It's like the original bear type soft case they had back in the day. The zipper works really well. Let's take a look at it. Oh, look at there. There she is. And the original string with it too. Okay. Nothing else in the case. All right. Well, it's been fired, but not very much. Okay. It's got looks like an original bear hair rest on it. It's definitely got the original string on it. The reason I think it's been fired is it has these little knot positioner things here. They slide up and down, which are totally useless. String's a little bit dry rod, a little bit minor fraying to it, but otherwise it's in clean shape though. It is a 45 pound bow, so it's 52 inches um, overall and 45 pounds. It is made out of green future wood. It's got a blue accent stripe in it and it's got two layers of maple in the limbs. All right, with Bare fiberglass, or called bare glass, on the back and the belly of the bow. It's got the white crown on it, and of course the um, converter bushing, put stabilizer on or a fishing ring on. But there are no sight mounts or anything like that on it. Does have the silver bear emblem on it? This is vintage 1972-73. Um, I looked up the serial number on this bow from when I, when I bought it, and this is a 1973 vintage bow. So. At least the most I can, I can break it down to 1973. It's 19, uh, early 1973, maybe late 1972. All right. Bow has reinforced tips. Okay. So we'll handle a fast light string. The string that's with it is your standard bare Dacron string. It is kind of dry rotted a little bit. It needs a lot of it. It's quite a bit dry rotted. It's been, been sitting around for a while. All the strings are frayed. So definitely needs a new string. I would not string it with this string here. Let's get you a better look at this bow. Okay, here we go. Here's a better look at this bow now. All right. We'll start from the top of the limb. As you can see, it has reinforced limb tips, which are really nice on it. Bear glass on it. It has your two layers of your bear um, maple in there, two layer cores. Here's your fade out right here. It comes down to the limb. It's made out of future wood, 
green dye feature with that blue accent stripe to it. Looks like an original, well it's not original bear hair because it's not leather. That's a, that's a hair rest and that's a, a carpet rest. So I'm going to have to remove that. That's not the original rest and it's kind of dry raw. So we're going to remove that and put a new rest on here. Another nice blue stripe coming down. Very little wear on the bow at all. Okay, we'll come down this side here. More of, it, more of the fade out. Okay, you can see where the, where the wood didn't quite get dyed right there. Come across back to the maple. Just like that. And then you've got your other reinforced limb tips here. The bow is straight. There's no issues on the bow. It's got the nice, if you look here, it's got this a little bit of wear right there. Not much. I guess that could be from shipping. But it does have a, uh, their string, string groove there. All right. All right, let's take a look at the other side. Yeah, this is the top of the limb, so there's no wear on this limb here, so it must have been, and it has been used. Um, the buyer from eBay said that it, he couldn't think it had been shot, but he got it at an estate auction and he bought it at. So he wasn't sure, but it looks, I mean, the bow is, he's right, the bow is clean. There's no bad fiberglass issues anywhere on it, nothing popping through. It's because it has tapered limbs, as you can see, the limbs are tapered, as you can see there. Um, here's your bare Kodiak Magnum silk screening right there. Bare Kodiak Magnum silk screening. Grip area right here. Come down. Here's your bare patent numbers here. This does not have the Canadian patent date. They got rid of the Canadian patent date in early 1972. That's why I'm saying this is either a late 1972 or early 1973 bow. Okay. Um, here's the front, of the front of the bow with your tips there coming across. Here's your um, bushing here, convertible bushing. It's got your white crown piece on top as well. Here's your bare emblem right there, a nice silver bare emblem, very clean. Overall, the bow is super clean, okay? Now the string, it's the original bare string as you can see here. It's original bare string. It's an endless loop. Daycron. As you can see, the string is kind of dry rot a little bit. It's got a lot of issues with it. See all the dry rotting in it? So it's not a safe string to use. Okay. It's got these old school knock positioners, which weren't worth much in. They always slid up and down. They really never stayed in spot. Unless you put a piece of glue on each side of it. But then they were so cushiony they like moved on your point A. I don't know why people use these your standard bare six inch serving okay and back down the string here more so this string's all frayed stuff needs I've got a new string order for this one here's your other end of it which is your other loop end this did have the this is before the time of the smaller and larger loops are both the same size so case that came with this I don't know if this is the original bare case I don't see a bare marking on it anywhere but it is super clean though the case, the case is nice and clean it does fit the bow right so I'm assuming that it's a bare case. That's what the guy said on the eBay auction. But either way I look at it, I paid $200 for this bow. I think that's a steal on this bow here, if you ask me. I think these bows new are like either $399 or $499. And they still make this bow today, all right? So it's a, I mean, for $200, I'm not going to complain. It's a steal. I do want to get this wrist off here, though, because this is not the original wrist. I can tell by looking at it. You see here, that's an old carpety wrist. It's all dry rotted. So we need to remove that. Get it off there. Okay, that's gone. Let's get this side piece off. Okay. Get the sticky part of it off. It's, it's coming off really easily too, so it's not, I mean, it's really coming off quite easily. And there's your weight on the back side of it right there, 44 pounds. Okay. So let's get some goo going, get that cleaned up and get a new rest on it. Okay. Not sure what that other mark is. I got other markings in there. I'm not sure what they are. If you can see those in there. Anybody knows what these markings are here? Let me know because I don't know what they are. I talk about good timing. I got my string came in same time I got the bow in today. I talk about good timing. Right, let's get this cleaned up now. The uh, goo gun brings it right off. Cleans it right up. There we go. Let 
I'll take a little bit of acetone, not a lot. I don't like use acetone, I prefer to use NH alcohol, but I don't have any right now. But we're going to basically use this to get rid of that goo gone off that rest. So just as long as you put a little bit of this stuff, it won't hurt it, but don't put a lot on there. Because it will eat through your, your finish on your bow if you use too much of it. But this little bit ain't going to hurt nothing now. Okay, cleaned off, good. Now with it completely cleaned off, take a white t-shirt and run it over. There's no sticky left, or the t-shirt will be grabbing it, so that's good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and attach me, uh, put my, let me a rest on here, then we'll attach this new string that I got in and check the draw weight on it. Okay, this is the rest we're going to use. It's a hair rest with a, with a bare archery. Not really true bear archery, but close to a bear archery side plate. She looked pretty good in this bow. Okay. As always, first thing to do is make a find out which way the hair is flowing on this. Because the hair flows this way, so we want to do it this way. When the, when the arrow comes off of it, like this here, it'll flow with the with the um, hair. So I'm gonna set this up against here like this, and just draw me a little line across it. Get your nice little thing on the back side of it, and you can trim it off. Okay, let's test fit it again. And we're going to need to trim this corner off just a little bit here on this side. A little bit more. And that should do it. Yep, right there. Trim this edge off a little bit. Now I'm just going to trim up the edge of the, of the hair. So there's no fraying on it, just like that. Okay, that's done. Okay, good. Okay, that's all finished. Peel the sticky off. Use a knife blade to peel it off, just easier to get to it. There's a sticky on it. Okay. Go ahead and set it in there. Try to keep your hand off the sticky if you can. I start from the back corner, work my way around. Okay, like that. And just corner across there. Alright, any little frayed hair, I just take my scissors and go right around the edges like this, just to trim it up. There we go. Okay, that's done now. Okay, I'm gonna take this pad and put it on there. So I'm doing a little piece of paper to get that off there. So there, take this pad and stick it right in there like that, and press it down. There we go. Yeah, it's nice and clean. There you go. Done. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and open up my string bag. Okay. 
There's my string for it. Let's see, nope, this is my 58 inch one. This is for my bear grizzly I got coming in, okay? Put that bag, that's for my bear grizzly. So, I hope the other one's for this guy. That's for my bear grizzly. I do have a bear grizzly coming in, guys. I'll be here soon, so be sure to look for that video. These are the cars my, my string maker makes for me. Uh, 52 inch for the green blue one, which is right here. And then we have a blue and white, which is right here. This is a BC4, okay, this is a, this is a, um, uh, B50, uh, BC4, which is a Browning B50 string. And this one's fast flight, okay? So. All right, we're going to put this, I know this bow would take a fast flight, but I want to run it with this string first just to be safe. So run with the BC4 first, okay? And it's a it's kind of a hybrid. It's a 16-strand string. All right, so it should work just fine. All right? Let's take a look now. We get it strung up. Okay, the brace height on this bow, from my research on it, should be between seven half and eight and a half inches. So I'm going to try to get about an eight inch brace height. Um, let's go ahead and always use a stringer when you put these bows on, especially these shorter bows. They're really hard to do with a push pull method or the step through method. You really need a stringer for these. Let's go ahead and get this string out. Very nice string. This guy makes really nice strings. I think they, this fast light cost me like $14. I think the um, the fast light's 14 bucks, and this Daycron string he made here, which is kind of a, which is a Flemish twist, I think it was like $14. So $14 and $19, bucks, so not bad. This should have a big ring and a small ring on it, and it does. There's your small ring for your bottom, which is very nice, and your top ring for your top. Okay. Let's get this on. He's got it really well waxed. It's really sticky, so it's really neat. I see I had to make me a 9-inch serving, too, which is nice. I like a larger serving. Let's put this over our bow here. All right. I added about three twists to the string. You might not need these. These, these are pretty good when you get some, when he makes them for me. I'll put his information down below if you want it. If you want it. Let's go ahead and get this baby strung up now. It's your bottom pocket, okay? Your limb goes in your bottom pocket here. Be sure it's in your string groove. You want to bring it around to the top. Be sure it's flat. You don't want any twist in it. And you got a big loop here on this end here. This loop here goes over your limb. And you put it right past your where your string is on your limb at. Okay, then all you do is step and pull. That's it. strung up. All right, let's check my brace height. Remember, we should have between seven and a half, eight and a half brace height. And I'm right at eight, we're going to be right at eight inches right there. See that right? Perfect. Okay. I like an eight inch brace height for this size bow. I've had this bow four years ago. I had one very similar to it. It wasn't a green one. It was a, it was a, a wood color one. It's one of those bows I got. I wish I never got rid of another one, but it shot really well. I remember shooting that bow. Actually, I killed my first deer with a bow like this. Um, so with a, a Kodiak Magnum, but a uh, wood one, not the future wood model. All right, let's go ahead and get this on there now. Okay, now this one here I always run just a little bit higher. Okay, you got a mark right there.
Okay. Let's go ahead. I got my knock. Slide it on there. As you can see that mark right here, this black mark I have right here. Can you see that? Yeah, that black mark right there, that's where I set my, um, this mark here, if you look at it, it's about three-eighths of an inch above. That's where I always set my, that's where I get starting point when I'm starting to set my arrows up, okay? Some people go an eighth, I like to go three-eighths of an inch, it gives me more room to mess with. Okay. Well, this is um, Halo 024 serving too, which is a really strong serving. I'll hold it really well. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and check the, um, the draw weight in this bow. Remember, the bow is listed at 44 pounds. The actual draw weight is a 45 pound bow listed at 44 or 28 inches. So my draw weight 29 and a half inches. It'll probably pull around 48 pounds. We'll check it with my handheld scale first, and then we're going to check it with my um, tilting machine. Let's do the handheld scale first. Just what I thought. I'm pulling it right at 49 pounds on my handheld scale. And on my tillery machine, it's pulling right at 44.6 ounce, 44.6, almost between 44 and 45 pounds on my digital tillery scale. So that's pretty accurate. Considering the bow is made in 1970-73, which that almost 50 years, that holds its accuracy pretty well. It's a testament to how great these bows were built by Bear Archery. He really knew how to make some bows, and he really perfected this bow here. I love the grip on this bow. It's got a nice pistol grip, medium grip to it. It feels good in the hand. It's very light, okay? Bow is, I mean, you can see here how, how much tension. The only thing the issue this bow has is right here. It's got a little bit of scratching right there. I don't know if that's from shipping the box or what. That's the only issue I can see with this bow is that little bit of scratches right there. The rest of the bow is super clean. 